How's it going, Yankee fans? Welcome back to Fireside Yankees with your boys, Alex and Ryan. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. And we're uploading every single day to make sure you guys are up to date on all your New York Yankees news. Today, we're talking about the infield. And my friends, the infield has been polarizing. It's been volatile, to say the very least. Even Anthony Volpe has going uh, through a little bit of a cold stretch right now. We're going to talk about Anthony Rizzo, Glaber Torres, Oswaldo Cabrera, and of course, DJ LeMahieu, who was pulled from his rehab assignment yesterday after just one at bat uh, with, a, with a sore right foot, and that's not good. Um, he's going back to New York for more testing and further evaluation, and I think the expectation is we probably shouldn't expect to see him for the next couple of weeks. Uh, DJ LeMahieu, now 35 years old, certainly becoming a little bit more injury-prone with age. Some unlucky situations like fouling a ball off your right foot does not help him at all. Uh, the rebounding from that is just more difficult because of his age, but, you know, Ryan, looking at this infield, what is your confidence in it? At this point in time, though, I kind of feel like the Yankees are going to have to make a move at the deadline to reassure this this group, um, whether it be somebody to you know help at first base, if it's a guy in our own system like a Ben Rice, or a third baseman to help offset the loss of DJ LeMahieu and help um, kind of fill that. So I know John Birdie is, is coming back from injury at some point in a couple of weeks here as well, but do we really think John Birdie's a World Series caliber third baseman that's going to push us over the edge? Probably not. Um, you know, What is your current evaluation of the unit? Do you think they're going to start to ramp it up, or do you think we're at some point we're going to need some above-average reinforcements? Uh, yeah, so obviously, you know, too early to tell what exactly the Yankees are going to need at the deadline, but I think given the concerns I had about third base entering the season, given the fact that still looking at third base, you're like, eh, you know what I mean? Like, how much is Cabrera going to hold up? You know, I think the natural regression for him was just normal. Like, he wasn't going to be a 200 WRC plus sitter. Same thing for Volpe. Like, Volpe less concerned because I think, you know, the talent kind of speaks for itself. But, you know, you're not necessarily freaking out when a guy who has a 200 WRC plus and isn't a Juan Soto or an Aaron Judge or, a, you know, a Shohei Otani or whoever may be like one of these generational offensive players when they start slowing down because that's just expected. Um, you know, even a guy like Mike Trout, like if you remember, Mike Trout got off to like a crazy good start this season. Um, and not that he's been bad, but like, you know, he's had his ups and downs. And even last year, he kind of had a little bit of a slump. Um you know, I, I'm not really sitting here trying to compare these guys to my child or whatever. I'm just saying ups and downs is no one's uh, immune to that. That might be more so, I guess, a comment made uh, to kind of quell concerns about Judge, who I thought looked pretty good yesterday. Overall, though, um, as it pertains to the infield, you know, LeMahieu, I... I don't like, because like, again, I, I feel like there is a, there is a point in time where I come off as overreactionary, and I think the point in time in which I would would be saying a guy's season's over, or a guy this and that, on April 24th. You know, even the Rizzo episode, it, we were kind of just like, all right, you know, things are not looking good here, um, and, and the Yankees may have to look for a first baseman, but we at, le at least I think you could say we know it's early. For LeMahieu, I mean... We thought he was going to start his rehab assignment Friday. Then they look at an MRI and they they conclude he wasn't ready to start that rehab assignment. Then he gets one at bat on Tuesday, yesterday, strikes out looking, and doesn't play after that. Um, and it turns out he has a sore right foot. I don't think it's healed. I, I don't. I don't think they should let him play until it completely heals. I don't care if that means you don't have him for the first half. If he's because like here's kind of the thing, and I don't mean this to disparage Aaron Boone as a manager, disparage um, you know Lemayhu as a player, whatever it may be. Aaron Boone's gonna play DJ Lemayhu every day when he comes back. If he's eighty percent, I don't want an eighty percent of DJ Lemayhu. He's not, you know, you'll take eighty percent of of Aaron, like last year. You know, Aaron Judge probably like eighty percent, but you'll take eighty percent of Aaron Judge, right? Because it's still Aaron Judge. You're going to take 80% of Juan Soto. Otani's playing with a recovering UCL, but you'll take that version of him because he's Shohei Otani. Bryce Harper playing through the UCL tear or coming back from TJS early because he's Bryce Harper. DJ LeMahieu is not Bryce Harper. He is not an elite caliber player. 80% of DJ LeMahieu is a bad major league player. Let him fully heal. Let him fully have that foot come back. I know he wants to come back, that being LeMahieu. He wants to hurry things up. He wants to get back on the field. He's dying to play on the field. I'm not questioning the effort level of, of LeMahieu. I, I know he wants to be back on this diamond. If anything, I'm, I'm basically asking the Yankees and, and asking LeMahieu here, hey, man, you don't have to prove that you want to be here. 
I we know I I know these guys want to be here. The intensity these guys play with, you know, it doesn't look like they're pressing even when they're playing Puyo. Like you have Judge Verdugo and Soto in the outfield, kind of you know figure out who they're gonna throw a ball to, to in the fan to the stands with the fans. You know, they look like a light you know kind of loose clubhouse. I think that's important. The ability to weather the storm when you're losing all that stuff. Uh, but you know, if you're LeMahieu, I know you want to get back in the action. This is a 16 8 Yankees team. Like again, for all of the Yankees, like you know, oh my God, is like the 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 the, the I guess you would say the sky's falling um you know the Yankees are on pace for 108 wins right now they're not gonna win 108 games most likely but they're playing really good baseball and I get that let me it's it's tough to sit on the sidelines for that or to sit on the bench and to watch it and not be a participant but he's got to do what's best for himself he's got to do what's best for the team and Alex I am fully on the train of what's best for him and the team is him waiting until he is completely healed not somewhat healed not okay not hobbling fully completely no doubt about it healed I do not think he's ready to come back yet, and I think the Yankees are doing the right thing if they're going to be careful with him. I think they've been doing the wrong thing by having him try to play and having it, or not forcing him to play, but enabling him playing and letting him play through pain. He should not be pay- playing through pain and being an 80% version of himself because that's a bad baseball player. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they need to make sure that DJ is fully healthy before they even considering uh, <clears throat> bringing him back into the fold now, but... In the meantime, this unit is really struggling. I mean, Rizzo had a good game yesterday. Um, Gleyber Torres continues to struggle. I mean, this is an important year for Gleyber Torres, and I want to kind of stick on him for a second here. Torres' slugging metrics are down quite considerably. His strikeout rate is up about 11%. He hasn't had a home run yet. You know, James Rousen said, um, I think via the, the Athletic, that he feels like Glaber is really close to getting back to himself. Um, just seeing a little bit more pitches, getting a little bit more experience this season, just kind of get getting into the swing of things. Um, I'm not really, I, I don't want to say I'm worried about Glaber Torres, but I will say this. Glaber Torres is known for his volatility. One year he's great, the next year he's not so great. The next year he's great, the next year he's not so great. This is not unusual for Gleyber Torres to have a down season or a relative to his previous campaign. Uh, last year he had a, what, 123 WRC+. plus. Um, he was pretty solid. He had 25 home runs. Like, he was a good player. He was arguably our best hitter behind Aaron Judge when he was healthy. Um, this year, you know, he's not hitting the same. His defense has been porous. I just don't think that we're going to see the 2023 version of Gleyber Torres, the one that we thought we were going to get, because, again, he's showcasing that he is a volatile player in terms of uh, career production. This is a primary reason the Yankees have not even thought about extending him, right? They wanted to wait until after this year to even think about the idea of extending Gleyber Torres, and... It's looking to be a good move because right now, Gleyber Torres is not the player that you want to be investing long term in eight years and, you know, 20 million plus uh, million per season. That's not the direction you want to go for a player like this right now, just to be quite honest with you. Um, I I just you need something a little bit more consistent. In fact, you know, Ryan, I'm going to throw out a crazy idea for you right now. Do you think that there is a, a possibility that the Yankees would think about trying to acquire a guy like Luis Arias from the Marlins if they're going to gut their team anyway? They're what they won f- a couple games this season. They stink this year. Is there a world where the Yankees hit them up and say, you know, we got John Brady from him before? You know, uh, Arias has one year left of control. He's looking really good this year. He's one of the best leadoff hitters and you know batting champions uh, in the game. Is that a player you think the Yankees could potentially look for and maybe flip Torres for pitching to a team that might need a second baseman? Um, You know, kind of just flip-flop a couple of guys. Uh, You know, it's a total, total uh, hypothetical. Glaber Torres could turn things around tomorrow and be red hot the rest of the year. I don't know what's going to happen, but let's assume he's a little bit worse, maybe a lot of bit worse than he was last year. Uh, Do you think that there is an avenue for the Yankees to potentially try to upgrade their big time? Yeah, so here's kind of how I view a rise. So um, he, he started off the year like super cold, like like ice cold. He had literally had one hit through his first um, his first uh, 15 play appearances uh, and no walks or one walk, excuse me. Um, but then since then, he's hit 318, 120 WRC plus. It's like, OK, that's the Luis Arise, you know, that you're used to seeing. Um, one of my biggest issues thus far with the rise is he's maybe been the worst defensive second baseman in baseball. I know Yankee fans in the comment section are going to be like, oh, well, no, it's Glaber Torres. It's like, no, Luis Rice is negative seven defensive runs saved in April. Um, April. Like, it's, it's been, <laughs> he is, uh, 
he is especially bad defender there. Uh, and I'm a little bit concerned about the defensive profile. Um, but offensive, we're talking strict offense. I think the profile works because I think the ballpark fits him. I think he's always been able, I think Yankee Stadium has always been the one ballpark where you could envision Luis Arise consistently being like a 10 to 15 home run hitter, um, and improving the game power without changing the approach. Now I will say too, I think the Yankees need more pop in whoever they add. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think they need somebody with a little more pop. The question is just like, who is that guy? Um, now, I think third base is still the position I'm looking at and saying, you know, that's a position where the Yankees could improve. Um, I, I also kind of wonder, and, and this is maybe me being pessimistic still, I'm not all the way back on Rizzo yet. Like, he hit one home run yesterday. That's great. I want him to play well because if he plays well, the Yankees are going to play well. And if the Yankees play well, blah, 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 we win the World Series, all that stuff. Um, but kind of an idea I want to float out there. I kind of hope, and this is, again, this is this is some serious hating, Alex. This is some, like, this is some grade-A hating on my end. But because of their team social media admin, I don't think it's that unjustified. Uh, I hope the Cleveland Guardians stink, dude. Like, I hope they find a slump. I hope they're awful. Because I, God, Josh Naylor, man, that's the guy I look at and I go, he's a psychopath. Did you see the play where he, like, hits a home run and he spikes the bat off of his head? He hits himself in the helmet with a bat, like, there is something wrong with him. And I mean that in the best way possible. He's rocking the baby after hitting a home run off of Garrett Cole. He hits this grand slam in Chicago and then starts running into the dugout screaming and he fires his helmet. Like, I'm telling you, like, he's, like, 99 miles an hour. Like, like Garrett Cole, Luis Seal Velo into the, into the dugout, uh, into the club, kind of like the downstairs area. This guy's a psychopath. Um, and I like psychopaths. I think psychopaths makes for good baseball players. Uh, you know, for the most part, like kind of like in the, in the fun, like, oh, he just celebrates after home run. Like Garrett Cole's not a normal person. You want to tell me that Garrett Cole is, a, do you see the way the guy eats bananas? The guy's crazy. The guy's, and that's why he's so good. You think Max Scherzer's got all his screws together? That guy's crazy. He's amazing, right? Like I think crazy players are, you know, I think there's something too that makes them fun. But when it comes to like trade targets or whatever, I'm going to stand firm that I'm fine at second base. I really do think Labor's going to get it going. I think this is more so a bad month than a bad year. Again, you kind of look at like, it, and shout out Fireside Bets, you know, you guys should follow us on our socials. But if we're looking at kind of like betting here, right? You know, if you look at ob odds and probability, because that's what we care about the most when we're making bets, the odds of Glaber Torres having an 80 something WRC plus or 70 something WRC plus from this point forward is super low. The odds of him being a good hitter, though, is pretty high because every projection system universally believes he will have a bet. He will start playing better. Even if you get a 110 WRC plus version of Glaber and it's not the breakout offensive season we were hoping for, that's still a good hitter, right? I I, I kind of look at I, I still I still look at I still look at a position like um first base. First base, third base, the corners are where I'm like, eh, I'm not too sure. We talked about this in the offseason. We were like, Rizzo, LeMayhew, you want insurance there because they're older and because they could get hurt. And like we kind of seen Stan, I think Stan's had a pretty good strong year, and, and overall, like I'm, I'm pretty excited about what Stan's done, and you know, I, I, I think he's gonna have a pretty solid year based on what he's done so far, uh, and kind of the initial adjustments which I did write about. Um, but like I look at first and third, and I say, okay, those are kind of where the old guys are. Lemayhu's coming back from a foot injury. I don't even know if he's coming back. Um, you know, looking at Rizzo, it's like the power's still not being there. I look at those two positions as like my positions of worry, and you have internal depth, Durbin. Vivas could both help you out at second um, if needed. Their primary second baseman. I don't think you have any organizational depth at third. So that's where my concerns are. So, yeah. Yeah, that, ma that makes sense to me. Um, the Yankees are, like, so stacked at the outfield position with youth. It's it's interesting because, like, what do you do? I know Jor Jorbet Vivas just came back. I like Jorbet Vivas. Um, I don't know if he's going to be your long-term starter, but – um, I'd like to see him put in a good year of work and like maybe fight his way on to this into this equation. Oswald Peraza, I'm, I'm kind of I think he's might be cooked personally. Um, I think you're probably in the same boat as I am on that one. So the Yankees, maybe there's a world where they try to leverage one of their outfield uh, prospects like because they have a bunch of them. Uh, maybe they try to leverage one for a middle infielder, a guy like a second baseman or a third baseman. It's possible. Um, you know, I kind of wish we had. Uh, uh, Trey Sweeney right now. <laughs> I think it's fine because we ended up moving him for someone decent. I forget who he, who he ended up being moved for. It was a direct Remember? swap, I think, him for, for Vivas alongside Gonzalez. The problem is just that Vivas right. got hit in the face. <laughs> Literally yeah. the last day of spring training, if you remember, Gonzalez gets hit in the face in Mexico on the same day. Mm -hmm. Like It was like a BP. Like Vivas just gets smoked in the face. So I... 
an orbital fracture, a, a jorbital fracture, I guess you want to call it. Jorbital. Dude, I, I feel bad for the guy. I mean, it, yeah. he, if, and you feel worse for Peraza because as you mentioned, like, he would be in this conversation and look at what Cabrera's done with playing time. Like, I'm not saying Cabrera and Peraza are comparable players, but like, we were, like, I don't remember looking at Cabrera and going, oh yeah, he's got it. He's so good. It was like, oh, he had a bad spring and like, he turned it around late in spring. Peraza had a bad start to his spring and then turned it around and, and didn't get a chance to turn it around. I feel the most of Peraza right now. We're talking about all these infield spots. It pains me that the guy's hurt. Like, I, I don't care what you guys think about him, but, like, he didn't even get a chance. The guy, the guy, not that he didn't get a chance, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like, poor dude. It's just, guy has, he can't catch a break, man. He really can't. No, he cannot catch a break. It's really unfortunate. But, you know, <laughs> I just I had to pull up Trey Sweeney's stats just to see if what we were missing out on. And Trey Sweeney's been pretty damn good, unfortunately. Um, now his strikeout rate's at 25.7%, but he's just adjusting to the AAA level. He's hitting 259 with a 406 OBP, uh, 395 slug and 110 WRC plus is a homer and 10 RBIs. He's adjusting well. He's a walk rate of nearly 19%. Unfortunate, you know, uh, hopefully Orbit Viva steps up and has a good uh, situation here. He's a lefty, and the Yankees wanted a lefty, so, you know, you kind of get that. I mean, Trey Sweeney was also a lefty for what it's worth, but 24 years old. I think Yorbit is 22, if I'm not mistaken. Is he the same? He's 23, so he's one year yeah. younger. Um, man, Victor Gonzalez, he, he kind of gave up the two-run home the other day. To the, was it the Rays, I believe? Or was it Shut Oakland? down against the Rays, Oakland. all right. home run to the A's. Just Because yep. that's how you scripted it, right? Like, Ugh. Ridiculous. I just, that game really pissed me off. That yeah. game was awful. That's the worst loss of the season. Like, I don't care. Guardians game, we scored seven runs and Volpe had like a three hit day. I, I still won that day. That shutout against the A's was like the most pathetic performance I've ever seen in my life. Like, that was like, turn off the TV, don't pay attention to baseball, let's go next kind of thing. Like, just pretend yeah. the Yankees don't exist for a little bit kind of game. game. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. It, it's like. The Yankees are kind of a polarizing team right now. Either their offense is going to show up or they're not. Um, the pitching has been forced to pick up the slack. But, um, you know, right now I do feel like this team needs their infielders to step up. We could use a little bit more health, that's for sure. Uh, but nonetheless, we still are, you know, maintaining pace. We're still winning games. That's all that really matters. But these are issues that if they don't get better, it could end up becoming a detriment to our World Series aspirations, guys. But always happy to hear your thoughts below in the YouTube comment section. Make sure to like and subscribe, as always. We'll catch you guys on the next Fireside Yankees episode. Perfect.